I better. Certificate to get started on your re landscaping of your shady areas and get somebody to dig it up all at the same time. <laughs> if you just train them where to dig, that would be the, the good thing. I guess everybody has a shady, shady yard interested yep. in knowing what to do and how to deal with things. Um, the first point that I always like to make when talking about the shade is that the sun is a plant's only source of energy. All the fertilizer in the world does not compensate for not having enough sunlight. Extra water does not compensate for having enough sunlight. Fertilizer in particular, you can put all the fertilizer out there, but unless you have the sun's energy to enable the plant to use the fertilizer, it's like we could eat all the food in the world, but if we didn't have a stomach and intestinal tract to digest it, it wouldn't do us any good. And Probably the most common questions we get are about areas that have simply gotten shadier and shadier over the years. And people sometimes think, oh gee, I'll just put extra fertilizer on to compensate for it. That'll make the grass thicken up and look nice and pretty, right? Wrong. It doesn't work. If you don't have the sun's energy to make things grow, all the fertilizer and all the water and all the tender loving care will make no difference whatsoever. So you have two choices when you're dealing with a bunch of shade. Either you cut the tree down or move the house, which is not always real practical, or you simply switch to plants which will grow with less light. And unfortunately, a lot of times it means kind of redoing. I can't tell you how many times people come in and, you know, they, the boxwood, they come in and say, well, the boxwood looks terrible. And I say, well, it's not enough light. And they say, well, it's grown there for 20 years. And I say, yeah. And that tree's gotten bigger and bigger, and it's gotten shadier and shadier. And now the plant's kind of doing this. And cutting it back and trying to do things to get it come back, to come back out again really isn't the answer. Unless you have strong, bright sun, you simply can't grow the same plants that you once grew. And thinning the trees is only a temporary solution to the problem, too, because what happens when you thin the trees? In about two years, they come back thicker than they've ever come back before, and the problem was worse to begin with. So, realistically, you just have to look at the area, decide what you want to plant. In most cases, grass is going to be a diminishing answer to the problem. Because while we do have grasses that will tolerate some shade, 
There is such a thing as having way too much shade for any kind of grass. There are some solutions, there are some things to talk about. If you just have to have grass, then you're going to have to, you know, thin that tree out or cut the tree down or do something different or settle for something like dwarf monkey grass, which kind of looks like grass. But bottom line, if you've got a real shady area, you're probably going to be looking at plants that will simply get by with less sunlight. And again, if you've got the boxwood, the yopon holly, the things that were there when the house was built and when the trees were very small, not really going to be much to do to revive them, so it's probably going to be time to think about taking them out and replacing them with something else. The good news is that plants like ground covers, things like Asiatic jasmine and all, take about a third as much water as the grass does, so they're certainly a much better choice in today's environment where we just are never going to have enough water to go around. They don't take nearly as much maintenance as grass did because you trim them once a year instead of mowing once a week. But what I always recommend is if you're suddenly dealing with a sunny area, first thing to do, just like in any landscape project, is to get an idea, get a plan in mind. And your choices are going to be permanent shrubs, permanent ground covers, perennials that grow in the shade, annuals that grow in the shade, and mulched areas. And again, that's the thing I think people overlook a lot of the times. You don't necessarily have to have that entire area full of things growing. I mean, a lot of people come in and they'll buy one of our beautiful swings or table and chair sets or things like that, and they put them out in the sun and then they don't want to sit there because it's too hot. There's nothing better than having a nice shady spot. This, uh, material that we made the walkway out of right here coming into uh, this building, that is what is called decayed granite. And it is a wonderful thing to put on the ground in a shady or in a sunny area. It's thick enough that it retards most weed growth. It's solid enough that you can set table or chairs or in whatever you choose, bird bath or fountain or some water feature of some sort, some piece of statuary. Again, a lot of things to do other than plants where you have a good shady area. And something like this makes a good solid surface where you want something solid to sit on. If you just want something that looks nice and suppresses weeds, then go with one of the good mulches. Anything from the giveaway mulch to the cedar mulch you get some places to a really high quality mulch. I always recommend living mulches for use around plants because they build the soil, they increase the microbial life, they help cut down on weeds, they help the plants grow better. But if you're just dealing with an area that you don't want to grow a whole lot, the cheapest mulch you can find out there is still pretty good mulch. Now, I always caution you that uh, be sure you know something about where the mulch came from, at least initially. One of the saddest stories we've seen was a person that came in with welts from about here to about here on her arm. She'd gotten out, gone out to the brush dump and gotten the free mulch out there and gotten down like this, you know, and spread it all around underneath the plants and found out the hard way that somebody mulched up a bunch of poison ivy in that particular batch of mulch. So if you're going to go out and get the free mulch out there, do wear some rubber gloves when you, when you handle it. Now, the toxins and things that are in the poison ivy do go away fairly quickly. But you'll find most of these places around um, that sell mulches, they're living mulches, they're mulches that have the compost mixed in are going to be moderately expensive, but their plain old cedar mulch and things like that are pretty cheap. If you're fortunate like some of us to live in Kendall County, for instance, they give away all the mulch you can haul up there for a $5 tip for loading your truck or trailer. You can have as much mulch as you want to haul away, and they got so overstocked on cedar mulch up there at one point that uh, they were giving it away, no questions asked, bring your 18-wheeler and we'll fill you up the <laughs> And uh, friends out there at Stone and Soil Depot did exactly that, but uh, and it's funny, I was talking to the county engineer and he said, you know, we didn't know how popular your radio show was, but we called you and asked you to announce it. We thought we had two years worth of mulch and you got rid of it for us in less than a month. So anyway, if you can find places around, uh, cedar mulch again is an excellent, uh, excellent material to use in the shade. The one other thing I'll tell you to think about, if you are redoing an area that's formerly sunny and now it's going to require a good deal of 
re-landscaping, so to speak. If you have a sprinkler system, look at modifying it before you do a whole lot of planting and then realize that those spray heads don't work exactly the same way they did when you had that straight boring line of boxwood around the foundation. Now you've turned it into this beautiful flowing landscaped areas with all these different things. Do keep in mind that you may need to modify the sprinkler system before you really start doing a whole lot of planting. That may or may not...